Okay, here we go, our CC with graduation. So I'll start off by sectioning off the side area. Make sure you always work in super clean sections. And here my sections are just slightly diagonal. And through the side area, I'll be cutting in quite steep, quite high graduation. My graduated angle is at about 80 degrees. I don't want the weight falling too hard. So again, that's why a higher angle was selected through the side area. And it also works well because Ching, her hair is super, super dense. So a lot of times when you're working with high density hair and you're working graduation, sometimes you have to modify the angle that you're accustomed to cutting on thinner hair, on finer hair. When you move to density, a lot of times I'll just up the angle and it'll give me a really nice effect. Okay, so always again, work in manageable sections. Make sure that your stroke count is under control. You don't want to go in and comb out the same section over and over again. With strong intention, per section, if you need to break it down, maybe just like two strokes, that should do the trick. Stand in front of what you're cutting. And as I stroke there, I like to let my comb set in the angle that I want, and then I have my fingers follow my comb because my comb cannot bend, it cannot change its shape. My fingers have that ability so that's one control mechanism you can kick in to just ensure that your margin of error is always at a minimal while you're cutting hair because to err is human. So a higher sense of awareness will organically allow you to avoid those catastrophes or small mistakes that turn into big mistakes. So right here with my new section through the sides, my challenge here is I have to cut in the exact length, the exact angle as the original side. So in my mind, I already know I cut in an 80 degree angle. So knowing the exact angle, when I can actually put a number to it, it allows me to get my symmetry and balance consistent much faster. And again, when we're working with graduation, mathematically graduation is an acute angle. An acute angle exists from 1 degree to 89. So if I can call out and say the name of the actual degree that I'm cutting, it makes my work a lot more polished, a lot more detailed, and then I don't have to always just be relying on my feelings. So I feel this is a proper angle, or I feel it's a little bit off. When I throw in math, it's a lot easier to control the actual shape that I'm building throughout the haircut. Okay, just make sure here, again, I'm cutting with super clean lines. I don't like texturizing like the hair too much, especially when the hair is dense like this. A lot of hairdressers, they'll revert back to a, a failing technique that with super thick hair, you have to go in and bust it up a lot, which, which will do the trick for like a week or two, but then as the shape grows out, it just grows out absolutely horrible. So it's always best to go in and just I prefer to cut in these super clean lines because again, super clean lines, the shape's more evident. Okay, so now we're working into the back. I come out a slightly diagonal section and here I'm cutting in a length that's graduated, okay? It's shorter through the sides and longer at the center. So again, notice the angle that I'm cutting, yeah? So there's an angle that I'm cutting in between my fingers and then with each progressive section, I'll be elevating. So I'm creating another type of graduation through my elevation. So this technique will allow me to elongate the back a bit. I'm building in up some weight and it works extremely well with her hair texture because again, it is super thick and there is tons of it. So again, cutting in graduation through my fingers and I'm increasing my elevation with each progressive section. And always make sure they are, when you're cutting, you can sew a super clean guideline. So here, my angles, I start to pivot a bit much. And notice how here, my, grad, my elevation increases. It's still the same shape, but just at the round of the head, with each progressive section, my elevation begins to increase. So remember the elevation with the very first section. And then as I work up towards the crown, 
my elevation increases. So that'll give me an oval shape <laughs> of the graduated line that I'm cutting between my fingers. If you get, can get your head around it. So it's a bit oblong, technically. If you look at it in a geometric fashion, if you throw into math, it's actually oblong graduation. Okay, I keep on working my way up towards the crown. To the crown area, notice how I'm over directing. So that allows me to build up a significant amount of weight. And I'm checking in, I'm connecting the sides just a bit. So here to the right side of the haircut, I'm doing the exact same shape. So again, my angles to the back is shorter through the towards the ears, longer through the center. And with each progressive section, I'll be elevating the hair slightly. So working clean, manageable sections, continue to increase the elevation. And watch your stroke count. Again, with strong intention, there's no logical reason why you have to comb the same section out like 20,000 times. And as I'm approaching the right side of the head, right, through the back, my body position is actually, my chest is like right at the center of that section because my body position, when it is proper, it will allow me to cut better, stronger, faster. If I was standing too far to the right of the section or too far to the left, my natural tendency is to over direct the hair. I won't, I can't say it'll throw off my shape. It will just make it much more, much more challenging for me to actually go in and cut in a super amazing shape. So body position again plays a key role while we're cutting hair. So I'm just dusting in some hair. A lot of times it's not the amount of hair that we cut, it's the shape that we cut. So I'm alterating the shape, but I really don't have to take down too much hair. So again, with each progressive section, I increase my elevation. So notice how my section here, my elevation, the amount of elevation is significantly higher than my original. And I'm just gonna work with the same type of sectioning up to the crown area. And here I'm incorporating the areas to the sides so I can blend this in because my graduated shape is longer in the back and shorter through the front. So that was done by intention so I could connect this shape better. And there's a little bit of heaviness there so I'll just go back and clean that line a little bit more. Okay, so now as we're getting to the top area, I'll comb out a slightly diagonal section and at the crown area, I'm combing the hair out and I'll over direct to the right. So this will allow my shape to fall a bit heavier. If I were to over direct the hair straight out, I could cut the same graduation. First of all, it's really tough. It's, it's more challenging to get your fingers in that tight, but it's possible. But the reason why I'm over directing out to the side and not as high is because I want this top area to fall quite heavy. So again, following my guideline, over directing up and to the sides. Now I just continue cutting the entire front area in the exact same manner. I will have some disconnection towards the front, but that's, that's actually what I want. So I'll go connect the disconnection once the hair is dry. Okay, so this like front area here, it totally disconnects from the sides. So as I progressively work forward, my disconnection becomes more evident. And towards the back of the shape, it actually connects. So you're probably, I'm anticipating at where the ears set, if you're looking vertical and parallel to them, that's where the disconnection to the top begins. So I'm here, I'm cutting the exact same technique on the opposite side. Come here up, out, over, and I have that graduation through the back, so I just work off that guideline. Checking the sides there. So there we have no disconnection yet. As I said earlier, the disconnection will come into play at or about when I get to the ear area.
So you can curl my hair out and over and follow my guideline. And I'm still cutting in that steep graduated shape. My disconnection comes into play here. And notice with this section, I also have a guideline from the opposite top side. So when I'm cutting hair, the more guidelines I have in my fingers, I have I look at it as a lot more support to cut properly. So with this final section here again is up, connecting in. And here I'm over directing back because of the cowlick. And but once the hair is dry, I'll check that in. So I'll go with a paddle brush and I'll just flat wrap the hair to get a nice, smooth, healthy finish with tons of movement. I'll push the hair around in lots of different directions. And I'll use a significant amount of tension just to get the hair nice and polished. Okay, and one key thing you should watch out for when cutting graduation is the amount of tension that you're using at the crown area or anywhere there's a really strong cowlicks. When you're flat wrapping the hair and you see a quite intense cowlick, my best suggestion is to lay off the tension just a bit so that and allow the hair enough room to do what it'll naturally do because if you use too much tension, you may over control that cowlick and force it to do something it won't do naturally. So once the hair is dry and you go back and check that shape, it's, it may be totally different than after the client goes home and takes a shower and the hair falls back to where it naturally falls and there may be a big mistake there that you didn't catch in the salon. So a good rule of thumb, at really jumpy cowlicks, just a little bit less tension. And here I'm just leafing the hair and I'm going for a really soft finish and I want the nozzle of my blow dryer to just flow down the hair shaft. Okay, I just keep on working the hair until I get it super, super, super shiny. And now that the hair is dry, I'll go back and refine the shape. So first I'll jump into the sideburn area and here I just, I'm going for a super clean line. So I'll cut in the angle that accentuates that sideburn a bit and then cut around the ears. I like to use my other finger and pull the ear back because cutting off earlobes isn't a cool habit to have. And just by pulling back the earlobes, it allows me to um, work faster and more comfortable around the ear instead of it being there and you have to find some like weird angles to get your the tips of your scissors in at. So that, that, that's a trick that works really well for me. Okay, through the back area, I just cleaned out a super long line because her neck's really nice. So the steeper my angle, the longer her neck will be. And I'm taking it a bit asymmetric. Even though the back is cut symmetrical, I, I just saw the way she has like two crazy calyx through the nape area. So I just, um, as I, once the hair was dry and I looked at the back, I found some inspiration. So there's a way I can make lemonade out of lemons, like those two super jumpy calyx. So going in with that technique through the back, it will definitely give her the back a stronger aesthetic. And again, through the opposite side ear area, I'm just going in, cleaning in my steep angles and just accentuating those sideburns a bit. And now through the top, I'll go in and I'll texture the hair. Now here when I'm texturing, I'm working in shadows and density because if I'm only working in density, the color might throw off my balance because here we have like pre-existing color and the highlights. So I have to take the density and the pre-existing color both into consideration. Okay, and just steadily working into the front and there's our disconnection. So I can chip into this. I want it to fall a bit softer so I'll go in a bit more aggressive. This is disconnection, it really doesn't connect anyways. I just want something when it falls naturally, that I can e easily go and manage. So taking just more hair through the crown, over directing forward, just continuing to chip in, run my fingers through the hair. I'm feeling for snags. If there's any heaviness or snags in the hair, I can feel it as I run my fingers through it. And if I find an area that snags, I'll go back and give it more tension. So here through the sides, the front area, I'm just going in and I'm just polishing up that line. Just want to get it really clean. So I'm really liking how this disconnection falls. 
Okay, and then you have it. Enjoy.